Welcome to the IT Solutions video tutorial on using an external RSS feed in your ASP.NET web application. We're going to start by creating a new website and I'm going to be working in C Sharp today. I'm going to be choosing an empty website because I don't want to go with the default files that uh, Visual Studio adds to the website. Let's um, give the site a useful name Call that RSS tutorial and OK, we've set up our, our basic website. Right, you'll see that there's no files except the web.config, which is the configuration file for our website. And we're going to go and add a new item to our website. By default, that'll be the default.aspx page, which is great, it's a web form. And we can see we've just been given a basic web page to start off with. Right, now in order to bring in an external RSS feed, we're going to need a data source to connect to that RSS feed. I'm just going to split my design here. And you'll see under our data list, we have a number of uh, data sources. I'm going to be using the XML data source because RSS is really just a source of XML. I'm going to drop that in. You'll see there that we can see that it's added the data source to our code. I'm going to go ahead and configure that data source. The data file will be the URL of the RSS feed that you're wanting to import or use within your web application. I'm going to go along to our website and uh, grab our Twitter link. And I'm going to make use of our RSS feed. Let's go back to our application, and I'm just going to copy that in. There we go, web application. The XPath expression, now this defines the type of XML that your XML data source will be, will be using. In this case, we need to specify that it's an RSS feed, and we do that like so. And I'm going to OK for that. And there we go, we now have a data source set up to an RSS feed and it knows what type of data it's expecting. Right, I'm going to go in here to use a list view control because it's very customizable, one of the nice new features of ASP.NET 3.5 and, and 4. There we go. I'm going to drop that on. It asked me for my data source, I already have one, so I'm going to go and bind it up with that, with that data source. Okay, now we can go into our code at the top here. And the first thing that we need to do is to find a, a layout template for our list view. That's the way that we want our list view to display itself. And I've decided that I'm going to set out my RSS feed as an unordered list. And what I need to do is within this layout template is to put a placeholder where the RSS feed will actually display. Let's make sure that all the tags are correct. And let's close that off for me. Now I need to define an item template. And this will be where I'm actually going to bring in the data from that data source, which is reading that XML file. And I want to create a new list item. Oops. Let's try that again. New list item. Here we go. And we now need to pull out the properties of our RSS feed from that um, data source using the XPath uh, properties. And what I'm going to do is create a link, which is going to use the link from our RSS feed for each item. And the way I'm going to do that is to grab the XPath property called link. 
from the RSS feed. There we go. Let's close off that link. And then I'm going to grab the title of each item in that RSS feed and um, that we will call, or that is called, I should say, the title. I'm going to save that and have a look. We can see it immediately it realizes that it's bound to something. And I'm going to go ahead and play that. It's busy starting up the Visual Studio web server so that we can preview our web page. Okay, and there we go. We now have a web page that has the list of all the items that are in the IT Solutions RSS feed. If we go and view that feed and just have a look at the actual source, the XML source for this feed, we'll see oops. We'll see that each item has a title, a link. Those are the two that we've made use of, but you could also use the pub date, which is the published date, description, and the GUID fields as well, if there's useful information that you'd like to bring in there. So there we go, and let's just have a look at the, the source for that. We can see that it's created a nice, neat linked list for us of all our items in our RSS feed. If I were to click on one of those, because we've created the link, it should then take me back to the actual original source wherever that RSS feed item is linked to. Good. Well, I hope you found this tutorial useful. All the files for this tutorial are available on our website, www.itsolutions.co.za. As with all our other tutorials, please be sure to check them out.